What's up everybody? I'm Josh with Northern Frogger and I am way behind on Bavarian builds. Um, I've got this big one behind me right here as well as these two 18 inch cubes down here. I've got this smaller vivarium over here uh, that's going to be for my crested gecko. I've got my big one out here uh, that I've had for a long time. Uh, it's partially built. I really need to finish this one. And then I've also got this uh, 18 by 18 by 24. This is a small tall exoterra. This one is going to be for my tinctorious cobalts. Uh, they are in a 10 gallon right now and I really want to get them upgraded into something bigger. Uh, so I think I'm going to do this one in this video. I pretty much have all the supplies I need, I think, uh, other than the glass top, which is pretty easy to get. Uh, so basically I think I'm just going to clean the stuff out of it and then I can uh, start laying out the cork bark and applying the foam. All right, so here it is, laid out on the workbench, ready to go. Now I'm gonna pull this screen top off of here and get rid of that, don't need that anymore. Uh, there's a couple things, I did get this tank used, uh, so there's some old adhesive uh, from where uh, I think a thermometer and hygrometer used to be, so I'm gonna scrape those off. Um, and then just kind of wipe it out, it's a little bit dusty and I don't know what this thing was used for before, so I'm gonna give it a good cleaning. Uh, make sure the foam and the silicone have uh, good spots to stick to and then I'm uh, going to start laying out some cork bark. So first I removed that adhesive residue uh, using one of these razor blade scrapers uh, which is a really handy tool to have if you're doing this kind of thing. You'll see I use it a few times in this video. Uh, and then I cleaned the tank uh, first with vinegar water and then rinsed it out with RO water to give a nice surface for the foam and silicone to stick to. And then I could start laying out the cork bark and I didn't really have a design in mind to start this. Um, I just kind of grabbed some pieces that I had um, and started trying them out in some different configurations um, until I came up with something I'm happy with. I always like to take my time doing this first um, so I make sure I have a rough design in my head uh, before I actually start applying the foam. Alright so I've got these first pieces uh, laid out basically how they're going to go. Um, as I foam them I'm going to try to get them to sit up a little bit more like this to kind of ramp up into the back. Um, I do have some more pieces. Those are probably going to kind of go along the sides. Um, but I'm going to do the back first and then I might have to wait till it dries a bit and then flip it onto either side uh, to do those ones. Uh, so these are the first ones that are going to go in. Um, so I've got my foam all shaken up there. So I'm going to put some gloves on and uh, start foaming. So to do this background, I'm using the Great Stuff Expanding Foam. Um, and I like to use the pond and stone version uh, because it's the only one that claims to be fish and plant safe. Um, and it's also black, which makes it easier to cover up. So I like to start by laying down a good layer across the entire back there. Um, and then I can kind of start placing my pieces in and filling in the voids behind them. And you can kind of strategically use the foam uh, to put it in more if you want them to kind of lift out um, to angle them a little bit. Um, then I kind of put a few more pieces in the back um, as well as these neck cups here uh, to be able to plant in later on. Uh, so we got the background started. I uh, kind of got through the first can of foam already. Um, got a little bit more to fill in under there. But I'm going to let this sit like this for a while um, until it's cured and then uh, figure out what I want to do on the sides here. Alright so it's actually later the same day. Uh, this foam is set up enough uh, for me to do the next step. So I flipped uh, flipped the vivarium on its side here. Um, and I've got this next piece kind of propped up uh, with just a deli cup. Um, I'm going to foam this piece in next and uh, put a little bit more foam on this side and then let that dry. Got this piece foamed in there. And then some more just kind of foam coming out onto the glass there. This is all going to be covered up with uh, the substrate stuff. Uh, so once this stuff dries, I can flip it over and do this final side. Alright, so it's the next morning. I came to check on this thing and uh, a couple issues have noticed. I guess it's been a while since I've done any of this foaming and kind of forgot just how much it uh, slowly expands. You can see where I had this cup here and where this thing is now. Um, I came to check on this before I went to bed last night and it was still sitting on the cup and then over the course of the night uh, this foam has expanded so much that it's lifted that that far off of that cup. Um, so I'd initially wanted that piece of cork bark uh, to kind of come further out into the middle here but it's kind of lifted it up 
as it expanded there. Um, and then same with this piece here. It was kind of supposed to be at more of an angle into the side there. Um, but as the foam kind of expanded overnight, it kind of pushed it further back out. So it's a little further than, away from the glass than I wanted. Uh, but I think it's still going to be okay. Um, that's going to be quite the pain to fix now. Um, so I think it's going to be fine. But I can always just carve this side down. That's not really a big deal. Um, I think this is going to be fine too. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to flip it back over and uh, finish putting the couple pieces on this side here. Alright, so I think this is basically all I'm going to do for the side. Just add these couple pieces in here. There's not a ton left in this can, but I'll try and use it up. And this is my first time using one of these cans with this uh, special dispenser straw on there, which is supposedly uh, supposed to be reusable. Uh, which most of the time they aren't. Um, so supposedly you just break this hardened stuff off of this straw and it should start flowing again. So we'll see if that actually works. Well, it came off pretty easily. And now we'll see if it uh, continues to flow and yeah seems to be working all right let me put this camera down and uh, get to it all right there you have it I think the foaming step of this project is complete uh, yeah and then basically just gonna let this dry for a while let it cure up for a couple days uh, and then I can come back and start carving it. Alright, so it's a few days later, the foam is all cured. Uh, so the next step is basically just take a serrated steak knife or basically any kind of knife really and uh, carve it down. I don't have to do much on this one. Uh, just going to kind of take off a little bit in a few spots uh, so it shouldn't take long. Alright, so I think that's basically all the carving I'm going to do. Didn't really change the shape at all, just kind of uh, carved down the biggest bumps. Um, so now for the uh, messy part, I'm going to just clean out uh, the foam from the bottom here and then uh, start covering it with silicone and then uh, embedding the uh, kind of substrate mix into it. And for the background, I'm using a mix of plantation soil cocoa husk, reptobark, and sphagnum moss. And to apply the background mix, I'm using silicone. Uh, this is an aquarium safe silicone uh, that I get from home hardware. Um, so I just start by laying a good thick bead across and then using my fingers to kind of spread it out evenly and uh, make sure it's pushed into all the cracks and everything. And you do have to be a little bit careful uh, how much you try to do it once. I got a little bit too ambitious and tried to do uh, too big of an area in one go. And by the time I got to applying the mix, uh, some of it was a little bit too dry and tacky and I didn't quite get the coverage that I would have liked. Um, but that's not a big deal. I can always go back and touch it up later. But yeah, once I've got a nice thick layer of silicone on there, I just dump the background mix on uh, nice and thick and then go around and make sure it's all firmly pressed into the silicone. All right, so we got the first stage of the background mix on here. So I just kind of go along and uh, brush it with my fingers to knock any loose stuff off. Um, it kind of falls in the bottom and then you can reuse it on the next part. Um, it turned out pretty good so far. Um, there's a bit along the top here that didn't quite get enough coverage. Um, so I'm gonna co go back and uh, try and redo those spots. Same uh, like kind of under here and uh, down near the bottom where you can't really see. There's a couple more spots that I have to do a little bit more on, uh, but overall the coverage is pretty good so far. Uh, but most of the next step is to do this side. I'm going to cover up this big lump of foam here. Um, so I'm going to flip this tank onto that side now to make that easier and uh, silicone up that stuff.
All right, so this side is all cured now. I'm gonna tip it up and brush this stuff off. And uh, getting close to being done, hopefully I can finish off uh, with one more application of uh, silicone and background mix. Alright, so it's a few days later, um, the silicone is all cured here, uh, so the background's basically done. Uh, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Uh, so the next step here is to install the glass top and the screen section. And then I also want to show you how I seal up the sides. Um, some of these tanks, it's going to be a little tough to show on camera, but you can end up with a small gap along the side here uh, that fruit flies can get out of sometimes. Um, so I'm going to show you how I seal those up. So this is an older model of Exoterra tank uh, from when they used to have this clip-in lid. So I need to remove these tabs uh, before I can install the glass top. Um, if you've got one of the newer model Exoterras with the like swivel latches, uh, you don't have to worry about this step. But I just use my razor blade scraper to cut these out and they actually come out pretty easily. And then I could test fit the glass and get ready to silicone it into place. Um, and it doesn't take very much silicone here. I just kind of run a thin bead along the three sides to start. And then carefully lay the glass pieces into place here. Um, and I normally use one piece for this. The only reason I'm using two um, is because the glass shop just happened to have uh, these two pieces that were almost perfect already. Uh, so I got a good deal on them. Um, so I just put a thin bead of silicone across this edge here and put them into place. Um, and then I can clean up the little bit of excess with the razor blade later when it was dry. And when I'm sizing up the glass to get cut, um, I make sure to leave a bit of a gap at the front uh, to leave some room for ventilation and a place to install the mist nozzle later. Um, so I just use some fiberglass window screen and silicone it into place there. Making sure it's kind of pressed in and all the edges are covered with silicone. Uh, this is mainly to keep flies from escaping. And then I also like to seal up these door gaps. Um, I don't do it all the time. I think some of the newer tanks are built to a little bit better tolerance um, and they don't necessarily have the gaps, but some of these older ones do have just of enough of gap on the side that fruit flies can get out. So I'll just try to run a really thin bead down each one of those seams and then kind of spread it out a little bit. Um, you can see it here. It's not super visible, uh, but I can always scrape off the excess with the razor blade. So a couple days later, uh, when the silicone had all cured, I did come back um, and I just used that razor blade scraper um, and I was able to clean most of the excess silicone off of the glass here. And then uh, to open it back up, I'll just kind of use the razor blade inserted right into the seam there and just kind of slowly pull it down in order to break that seal and then just kind of like gently open the doors. Um, and they should kind of open uh, while still uh, making a pretty good seal there. So now all the siliconing is done, uh, the next step is to clean any excess background mix out of the bottom and then I can start adding the drainage layer, uh, which is the LECA or the expanded clay balls. Um, so I like to spread about two to three inches in the bottom there um, and then put your barrier layer in. Uh, this is just more fiberglass screen. Uh, definitely don't skip this step. You do need to keep your substrate separate from your drainage layer uh, to prevent your soil from getting saturated. Um, and then yeah, this is just adding in the soil mixture. And this is similar to the background mix. It has the plantation soil, cocoa husk, reptobark, sphagnum moss, uh, but this mix also has some crushed up charcoal, um, some sand, and a couple handfuls of organic potting soil mixed in there. I also added a few rocks in there as part of the hardscape um, and then I soaked it down really well with the mister um, and then added some leaf litter. Uh, these are oak leaves 
I just kind of spread those around. Those will give a good environment for the springtails and isopods to live. And then I soaked it down all really well again. And now it's uh, pretty much ready to plant. And these are some of the plants I'll be using. And rather than uh, try and butcher the pronunciation, I'm just going to be putting the names up on the screen as I go. So after that first round of planting, um, it was time to add springtails. Uh, this is a step I think I've forgotten to show in most of my other build videos, um, but I basically just flood a springtail culture so they all float to the top and then just kind of pour uh, the water into the leaf litter there uh, to get a good population of springtails started. And this is kind of what makes the tank bioactive. These guys will help break down the waste and the leaf litter and kind of keep your soil healthy. And then I kind of soaked it down all again. I uh, really want to make sure they're nice and soaked down when you first start just to make sure all your plants take root properly. Uh, and this is kind of what it was looking like after that. Um, I thought it was still a little bit sparse here um, so I did end up going back in and adding a few more plants. Um, that begonia kind of melted back most of the way but I think it's actually trying to come back now. And this was uh, two or three weeks later, so the plants had started to take root a little bit. Um, I probably could have waited a little bit longer, uh, but I was getting impatient, wanted to get the frogs in there, wanted to get this video done, uh, so I decided to release them back in at this point. Um, so I did try to put all three of them in there. I got these as a trio. I have had them separated out. Um, so there's there's one male and two females, and I've just had one male and one female together, and the other female has been alone. but. Um, I decided to try and put them all back together uh, to go into this vivarium and they all did seem fine together uh, for a few hours uh, but later that night I came back and the two females were really going at it uh, wrestling each other so I separated one back out. Uh, so if you're in Canada and you're looking for a nice uh, adult female cobalt uh, let me know. But that's going to do it for this build, uh, so I'm just going to leave you uh, with a couple minutes of footage of these cobalts enjoying their new home. Uh, definitely feels good to get them out of that 10 gallon and into something uh, much bigger. And it's nice to uh, get one more build knocked off the list here. And if you're looking for something to watch after this, um, I'd recommend to go uh, check out my video Territorial Tinctorious. Uh, where I talk a little bit about my experience uh, trying to keep Tinctorious in groups. Or you can go check out uh, one of my other vivarium builds. And if you've made it this far, uh, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel uh, so you don't miss any of my future builds. Um, definitely got some exciting vivarium builds coming up on the channel here in the near future. And as always, uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or suggestions for future videos, uh, leave them down below in the comments there. Thanks so much for watching everyone, and until next time, happy frogging. Mm -hmm.